This is my coding boot camp review. Uh, I went to a coding boot camp called Dev Mountain. That's actually uh, where I got this shirt. Uh, and you'll see on the back, uh, I got a champion, a unicorn champion for uh, winning a competition there. Um, so I was in uh, the top of the class. I uh, won an award there. I did a pretty good job there. That's actually where I learned how to code. Um, I went there about three years ago now, which I can't believe it's been three years ago. Um, but before going to Dev Mountain, I knew nothing about coding. Um, so I I was I started from nothing. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be giving my uh, review as uh, I was somebody who knew nothing about coding. Uh, I just went to Dev Mountain, a coding boot camp, because I heard... Uh, it had a high success rate. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my experience there, the pros and some things that I wish they had told me before I went there. Um, there's some big things that I wish they would have told me, especially about finding a job. It was not as easy as I thought it would be. But I'll go ahead and talk about that in this video. Before I get started, I make a lot of videos about React Native, Expo, Flutter, things like that. If you like videos like that, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon. We come out with videos all the time and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so the coding boot camp uh, positives. My positives about going to Dev Mountain. Well, I uh, I did actually learn uh, all the skills I needed to know in order to be a junior developer, um, which is really their promise to you. Their goal is to help you know all you need to know in order to be a junior developer to get an entry level job. Um, so I would say that I did gain the knowledge to be a junior developer. Having said that, there are others who did not learn skills they needed to know. Um, I So me personally, I feel like I had a leg up on uh, the competition there because um, I was 30 at the time. A lot of the other students were uh, right out of high school. And so they like didn't really try. Um, and so like instead of... Uh, going home and doing their homework. They would go home, play video games with each other. And uh, by the end of it, like, I think they kind of just wasted $12,000, which it probably wasn't their money to be uh, fair. It was probably their parents' money that they were spending. Um, and so if you uh, are a lazy person um, and you think you can just go to a coding boot camp and have a guaranteed job afterward, uh, I would say coding a coding boot camp is not for you. A lot of these... Uh, students just came out no, not knowing how to be a developer. Um, and they honestly gave developer students a bad name. Like it's a thing in the industry, like, oh, you just went to a coding boot camp. You probably don't know what you're doing. Um, and so it, it makes it kind of difficult to find a job afterward. And it's understandable because a lot of uh, students are right out of high school. They don't really care. They're just going to have fun. And uh, they, they don't really get anything out of it. And so I would say uh, for them, it was not worth it. But for me, I was 30 years old. I was kind of starting my career over from scratch. I had a family, I had a few kids. And so when I was going, I uh, was spending up to 70 to 80 hours a week, completely focused on coding. I, I was spending my own money. I really wanted to make sure I got the most out of it because I needed to get the most out of it. I needed to find a job after this to be able to provide for my family. So uh, with that in mind, I was blown away by how much I was able to learn. An example of uh, how much I was actually able to learn, um, before going to Coding Bootcamp, I had tried to start a number of tech startups. As a non-technical co-founder, I was dependent on technical co-founders. I had to find other developers to build the products that I had ideas for. One of the uh, products I wanted to build was a book writing program, a, a sort of like Google Docs, but for book writers. Um, and uh, so I found some great developers on paper, like uh, one of them was a developer at a multi-billion dollar company. He had 14 years of experience. Another one worked at a really big development firm. Um, and they, on paper, they looked great. Uh, but the problem was I literally waited two years 
two years. It hurts to say that two years just for an MVP, a minimum viable product to be finished. Uh, and after two years, they still had not finished a product. After I went to a coding boot camp, it took me two weeks. Two weeks, I was able to build what I had been waiting two years for. Um, and so uh, I really, you really can learn a lot in just three months. Um, so that's the, the big positives, a huge positive. If you ever are even considering being an entrepreneur, uh, I would definitely say you should, it's a great idea to learn to code yourself. So you do not have to depend on developers. I know somebody else who, uh, he's literally been waiting, uh, 12 years for, um, other developers to build things for him when he doesn't realize, I told him, but he, he still doesn't realize that if you did just take three months to focus on coding, you could build whatever you want yourself. Um, so anyway, it's it's a big plus if you ever want to be an entrepreneur, you can just build the things you think up in your head uh, instead of relying on others. And you, I do think you can learn the skills you need to know. Uh, and compared to the cost of college, which can be tens of thousands of dollars a year, uh, you can uh, now I think Dev Mountain is only like seven thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, when I went, it was about twelve thousand uh, dollars and they have student loan programs um, that you can apply for. Um, and so it's very affordable and you really can learn the skills you need to be a junior developer. Now, here's the downside. Here's the parts that I wish somebody had told me. Um, Based on all the marketing, it just seemed like, oh, you're going to go to this school and uh, you're just going to have tons of job offers waiting. You'll have a job making sixty to $80,000 a year uh, just waiting for you, ready. And all you have to do is go to this 13-week school and uh, it'll you'll, you'll be able to just get a job really easy. And you heard all these testimonials, these people who found jobs. Um, but uh, my personal experience was finding a job was much more difficult than I realized it would be. Um, having said that, I did within um, about three to four months, I was going to be offered a job making eighty-five to $90,000 a year. I was dumb and I turned down the job offer because there was another job I interviewed for that uh, it paid less. It paid around sixty thousand a year, uh, but it was such a cool job. Like, and the the hiring manager made it sound like he was ready to hire me, um, and so I turned down that other offer. And uh, but the 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 other job didn't work out because the the company it was kind of a startup. It started losing money all of a sudden, and uh, they they basically they rescinded their their offer. They never offered it, but he made it sound like he was about to offer it. He didn't. So I had to go on another journey and it, I wasn't able to find a job for like another three months. And, uh, I finally found one, but it only paid about $52,000 a year. It didn't have any benefits. Um, and the 85 to $90,000 a year job had full benefits and I was just dumb and didn't accept the job offer. <laughs> now, having said all of that, um, I probably no joke, had to apply to about a thousand jobs, 1000 jobs. So I would like every day apply to every single new job nationwide. I didn't, I was willing to move, um, to find that job. And so like I was in Utah at the time, the job I ended up getting was in a small town in Florida. Um, so I had to be willing to move. Uh, I could not find a job in Utah. I applied to every job that popped up. I just could not find one, even though it claims to be like the next Silicon Valley in the Salt Lake City area. Uh, but it, I, I just was not able to get a job. And uh, I, up to a year after going to the school, I still knew people from my class who hadn't gotten a job yet in as a developer. I felt they, uh, when I went, they had hired a uh, development hiring um, department. And basically they filled it up with recruiters, uh, people who had worked full-time as recruiters. 
Um, and so those were the ones trying to help you get a job as a developer. Um, they helped a little bit. They made sure that your uh, resume looked good on LinkedIn and uh, places like that. But I would say they did not do a good job preparing you. Um, and I personally believe it's because none of them had ever been developers before. None of them had ever even uh, gone through the process of getting a developer job. So they maybe they've gone through the process of hiring developers before. Uh, but if you've never actually gone through the process of trying to find a job as a developer, it's uh, I don't know that you can do a good job um, helping people find a job. So this last part, I'm going to talk about uh, how do you find a job after going to a coding boot camp? Um, if if I could do this all over again, I, I wish somebody would have sat me down and explained what I'm about to explain to you. And if you follow these uh, instructions, uh, I think you ha would have a much higher chance at getting a job after a coding boot camp. So this is my advice. If you decide to go to a coding boot camp, um, this is my advice on how to find a job. First piece of advice is don't think that because you graduated that you're done with school yet. Um, don't immediately start looking for jobs. What I would say is you should spend one to two more months ex just in your mind, think, okay, after I graduate from coding boot camp, I have one to two months left of work to do before I start applying. What you should do during those one to two months is you should be building a portfolio. Uh, when I went to Dev Mountain, they had you build out two websites that you could use on your portfolio. They weren't very good because I was just learning. Um, I would say you should have si at least six to 10 great looking websites that you have built yourself. Or if you went to be an app developer, uh, build three to six great looking apps because uh, Dev Mountain has different options. You can go for web development or app development. Um, whatever you decide, make sure you spend one to two months building out great a great looking portfolio. So if you went for app development, build three to six apps. Go ahead and publish them on the App Store. Um, if you went for web development, build six to ten websites. So once you have a great portfolio, the the last thing to one of the last things to do before you start looking for a job is uh, make sure you have a great looking portfolio website. So uh, go ahead and build a website and uh, put your portfolio on it. Make sure it looks really good. Um, one kind of hack to do this is if you're not good at designing um, uh, is go to something like Wix.com. Uh, actually pay for it, um, pay for a plan so that you can get a real domain such as like for for me, it's like tjmccartyportfolio.com, um, which it's out of date if you end up going to look. But for you, whatever your name is, portfolio.com um, and just find a good template on Wix that looks good uh, and re replace the 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 images with images and links to your apps or websites um, and your uh, contact info. Make sure you have that. Put that on your LinkedIn profile um, and go ahead and build a LinkedIn profile uh, and try to get at least 200 um, connections. And uh, once you've done that, this is the last big piece of advice. If you want to, so stop right there, actually. Um, with that, you could just go ahead and start applying. And um, the rule of thumb should be you need to apply to a thousand jobs. It, if you have not applied to a thousand jobs, you should not be freaking out like that you haven't gotten a job yet. If you've only applied to 50 jobs, um, you shouldn't expect to, to get a job. You need to apply to a thousand jobs. Um, and I would say you should, especially if you're early in your career, you should be willing to, to move to wherever the job is. Luckily, since COVID, um, the interesting thing is three years ago when I was applying, I'd say like 95% of the jobs, they required you to be in the office uh, wherever it was located. Since COVID, I would say like over 80% of the developer jobs out there uh, are fine with you working remotely. So it's kind of a different situation than when I started. So you might not even have to move. Um, so that might be a little bit outdated, but uh, to give yourself the biggest 
advantage, I would say be willing to move for a job. Um, make Don't be freaking out until you've applied to a thousand jobs. But here's the big one. Here's a big one that if you want a higher paying job, one that pays more, uh, you should get good at algorithms. Uh, you should be spending at least two to four hours a day just focused on algorithms, getting good at algorithms if you want a higher paying job um, at a at a better company. Um, if you're just interested in building plain websites and just want to work at a, a, a small developer firm, uh, you don't really have to worry about that. You probably could just get a job without the algorithms. But if you want a higher paying job, um, you should get good at algorithms. You should uh, sign up for something called Hacker Rank dot com and go through their their free course they have kind of a free course that helps you to to get ready uh for interviews you should be able to get to the point to where you can get through some of their complicated problems um, that you have to solve in your uh, coding language you should be able to get through those in uh less than an hour it'd be good if you can st get to the point where you're able to do complicated uh, problems, um, create complicated solutions in 30 minutes. The reason is the higher paying jobs, they'll send you these really difficult algorithm uh, tests and they'll ex they'll give you a time limit. They'll expect you to be able to get a, a, a certain score uh, within a certain amount of time. And uh, if you do a great job on those tests, even if you're a new developer, you can actually get a high paying job. For example, right out of coding bootcamp, I applied for a job that would have paid over a hundred thousand a year at a high paying startup. The, the founder of that startup uh, helped co-found canva.com. Um, and they gave me a chance to apply, uh, even though I didn't have a lot of experience, uh, but they expected me to pass these difficult uh, coding um, algorithm tests. I was actually in the top three um, JavaScript uh, test scores, uh, but they wanted, they only interviewed like the top one or two. Um, but my, my whole point is if you get good at algorithms, you can actually compete with people with 10 years or more experience uh, because a lot of these bigger companies, they, they don't value experience as much as they value uh, your ability to code really well. And um, one of the things I was told uh, in school is these algorithms are dumb. You're not going to use them on the real job. But uh, for whatever reason, the job, the people want you to uh, pass these algorithm tests. So you should just go ahead and learn it, even though it's pointless. A lot of people still have that idea that algorithms are pointless. Um, what I would say to that is if you are just working for a small developer firm and you're just building simple websites, I'd say, yeah, the algorithms are pointless. But if you want to build anything complex, like work at a firm or a big company where you're building complex applications, or you want to start a business and you want to build your own applications, you're going to be using algorithms all the time. Like I... I'm constantly, uh, I, I have two uh, websites I really focus on. Um, they're businesses I started. It's called fingobox.com and nativenotify.com. Um, so there's a lot on the background that I'm having to build out algorithms all the time. So um, anytime you have to build something even a little complicated, um, you're going to need to be good at algorithms. And algorithms is just a fancy way of saying uh, you need to be able to build complicated things. Um, and uh, you have to be able to create functions, complex functions that can uh, do things that are required for a complex application. Um, and those are the jobs where you can make over $100,000 a year. Uh, a lot of those jobs, gosh, if you get into uh, some really big companies like Facebook, Google, Netflix, anything like that, you could be making over $500,000 a year. A lot of them make close to a million dollars a year. And uh, the the path to there is uh, really just get great at algorithms and constantly be coding. Um, and you, you could be one of those uh, 
developers. So yeah, that's my review of Coding Bootcamp. Is it worth it? I would say yes. I think personally, it's definitely worth it, but you should be one of the ones that works your butt off. You should be working 70 hours a week to learn everything you can. And you should, after you're done, uh, after you've graduated, don't see that as graduation. See uh, yourself as I'm going to have to work two more months to get my portfolio ready uh, to start practicing algorithms to then be ready to uh, to start applying. I would say like it's been six weeks at least building out a great portfolio, portfolio website. It's been another two weeks, just like 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week doing nothing but practicing algorithms over and over and over again. And then your uh, weekly schedule from then could be the first two to four hours of every day, still be working on algorithms or building new stuff. Uh, and then the other four hours of the day, be applying to every new job you can find on like indeed.com or LinkedIn. Uh, and just keep doing that until you've applied to at least a thousand um, uh, jobs. And I, I would expect you to actually get a job. You should actually get a job. The very last piece of advice I would give is um, to not have a gap in your resume after you graduate coding bootcamp, maybe consider starting your own business. Um, it doesn't have to even generate any revenue. Just build a website that is complex, create some sort of product that's complex that people have to become users of, sign up to be a user of, um, and just put it out on social media uh, it could be anything. It could be like, uh, this is a uh, a unique collection of YouTube videos. I find uh, if you're interested in animal, funny animal videos, sign up for my funny animal uh, website. And every day I'm going to be posting new funny animal videos there. And so you can log in and see funny animal videos, anything, or maybe you're going to sell some clothes or whatever, just Start some sort of business that you have to spend at least, I don't know, like an hour a day on or so uh, updating the website so that you can put on your LinkedIn profile, say you're the chief technology officer of your business, have that on your resume uh, while you're applying for other jobs. Um, and if the places you apply to ask uh, about it, just say, I mean, be as vague or detailed as you want. You could just be honest, say, uh, I didn't want to have a gap in my uh, resume. So out of out, once I was done with coding bootcamp, I started my own business so I could keep my skills up to date. Um, but yeah, that that would that's all my advice. I'd say expect to be applying for three to six months. Um, I would think you could get a job within six months if you actually do what I just said. If you don't do what I just said, um, and maybe you're willing to apply for like 50 jobs, you may never get a job. There's still some people from my class who've never gotten jobs. Um, but if you're willing to do everything that I just mentioned, uh, I think you ought to be able to get a job inside of six months. Thanks for watching this video. If you are a recent uh, coding bootcamp grad, maybe you learned React or something like that, and you want to increase your skill set so that you have a higher chance at getting a job, you could learn. Um, from some of my crash courses. Uh, this video right here teaches you uh, React Native development, how to be a React Native developer. This video right here gives you a crash course in Flutter development. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. We come out with videos all the time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.